go. Try it again. And good morning, good morning. Mark. Yeah, and uh, we welcome in all of our uh, uh, listeners and and uh, our people that are watching uh, those uh, on uh, Vine Television mm-hmm. and on our YouTube channel and those watching New Wave Cable tan- Channel 15 in uh, the communities of Fairfield, Wayne City, McLeansboro, Albin, Mount Carmel, Carmine, North City, Newton, Alney, and Sumner. And welcome to the Vine Morning Show here on this Friday. And Kelly, we have uh, some special guests in studio with us this morning. Oh, do we ever. As we welcome in Brent and Angel McGuire from Fairfield. Guys, good morning and welcome. Welcome. It's nice to see you both. Hey, thanks for having us. Good morning. Brent, we hear you on on the news every morning, and uh, now we get to see your face again. Yeah, yeah. um, people may get tired of hearing me. I don't know. (laughs) No, it's good to see you in person. It's it's good. (laughs) We, We appreciate what you do. And you guys are here for a special reason to talk about Baby Veda, your granddaughter, guys. So, you know, I, you know, when you when you stop and you think about, you know, and excuse me here, and when we may get a little bit of emotional, but I can't imagine a child going through what she's going through. Tell us the story. Well, um, Veda was born April sixteenth, and she was uh, born at twenty eight weeks. She was twelve weeks early. Uh, she was only a pound nine ounces. And um, when she came into the world, she um, had a lot of obstacles that she had to overcome. Um, She had been in utero for at least a couple of weeks without amniotic fluid. And so when they brought her into the world, she, you know, she was just really small and she'd already had to be a fighter. And um, she came in and and they had her intubated and she was breathing, you know, um, through a tube but that only lasted for six hours. And that was the first obstacle that she came over. Some babies are on that for up to 48 hours. Oh my. So she was already showing them that she was gonna kick this. Um, And um, so when she came in, she was um, breathing on her own and and they they brought her in, they had her um, in this little isolate and she was just so tiny. And I just, I couldn't imagine uh, something so little being she's just thriving and it was was just our our little miracle she was like a little gift from God and everything that just worked right into uh, her coming into this world and the way the doctors worked with her and my daughter came through it well um we we thank St. Mary's for that in Evansville Mm -hmm. for bringing her in and for taking good care of her and uh, she did have a brain bleed um, as with a a lot of preemies they they what's the word I'm looking for Um, it causes like what's called encephalomalacia which Mm. is softening of the brain tissue Mm. and it can kill that part of the brain and they told her that she would have cerebral palsy or Mm. could possibly have cerebral palsy and it the part of the brain that was going to die was the part that was going to affect her legs. Mm. Um, But they said it could be anywhere from a developmental delay to something more serious and and more permanent. And so they worked with her on that, and then they also told her that she had a heart condition. And so there there were so many things stacked against her that they were already really concerned, and they were going to wait until she got bigger to do some genetic testing and to find out what they could do you know, treatment-wise and therapy-wise to get her to where she needed to be. Mm. Um, with the brain bleed, did, what, did they do something for that? Did they have to stop it, or did it just take care of itself on its own? They said that because she was so tiny, they were going to have to wait until it, it just dried up. Mm. And so they, they just watched her. They monitored her. Um, and she did really well. The brain bleed started to improve because I, I immediately, whenever I heard that she had the brain bleed, because they didn't, they did not know about it until she was about a week old. And they said that the brain bleed possibly happened in utero. And mm-hmm. so it had been a few weeks old anyway, and that she was, she was doing very well with it. And so, you know, we hear the bad and then we start praying and I, I get I got on Facebook and I, I know Facebook's not the best, but we have a prayer chain at church and I got on Facebook and I said, I need immediate prayers. My my grandbaby, she has a brain bleed. We don't know what that means. And I'm rushing there to Evansville to be with my daughter right now and to find out from the doctors. And when we got there um, to Evansville, 
my daughter and I, we sat outside the NICU and we were waiting for the doctors to come and tell us what was going on because they had to do testing for her. And they came about an hour later and that was the longest hour of our lives. And they told us, you know, we don't understand this, but this brain bleed, we, we knew that this brain bleed was a lot worse than what it actually was. And when we, when we got the results back, it's not that bad that, you know, we really think that everything is going to be okay. And so we were like, you know, check one, God, thank you. Yes. Because, you know, we see the bad. It came, you know, it was bad news. And then the doctors who know exactly what they're looking for, you know, the neonatologists, they've seen this day in and day out, are kind of baffled that, you know, it's not as bad as what they actually originally thought it was going to be. Mm. So, you know, that that's the very first hurdle that she came through was that brain bleed. Oh, so good because that could have been really bad yes and if at a pound nine ounces you know she's really tiny mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. you're thinking something that would be significant to us is much more so to her oh sure so she came through that hurdle and then you know we were just that's when my daughter started the grow beta grow because mm-hmm. we just wanted her yeah. to grow we wanted her to get big enough and she was excited because she thought you know i'm going to get to bring her home around her due date i'm excited about this Well, then she started to look a little pale, and the doctors were a little concerned about that. They thought maybe there was a blockage uh, in her abdomen or an abscess possibly in her brain that was causing her to maybe lose blood somewhere. And so, of course, they had to do testing again. And as with, you know, any testing, it's invasive Mm. for her. So they did a spinal tap, and they did some more Uh. testing on her, and they saw that, you know, there was something that was causing her to lose blood. And they they couldn't really pinpoint it. They thought, well, it's either an abscess in her stomach or in her brain, and they couldn't find the abscess in her stomach. So they thought, if it's in her brain, we're gonna have to send her to a level four facility where they can take care of that. So regardless of what it is, she's gonna have to be transferred. Mm -hmm. And so my daughter and the doctors decided together to transfer her to St. Louis. And I think that was uh, about a, she was about a month old whenever mm. was that true I, that sounds about right to me yeah she was transferred um, and of course they did another series of tests on her and she had gotten um, over her two pound mark at this time so that's good she was growing slowly but not as as well as the nurses would have liked but they didn't know what all she was dealing with to keep her from growing the way she should So when she got to St. Louis, they had to do testing, and that's when my daughter first heard the words leukemia. Mm. Mm. And they hadn't diagnosed her with it, but they said it was a possibility. So we were praying like none other. We were like, God, please, please, you know, help our granddaughter through this. No matter what it is, whatever comes our way, whatever comes her way, help her be strong, help her fight this. And so my daughter, you know, she was like, I just don't want this to be leukemia. But she was like, I, I mean, she was, I just, I need, she had to listen to the, to the doctors and hear what they had to say. And when we got there and they were talking to her about the possibility of it being a chronic condition, um, they brought up the term JMML. And we'd never heard of this condition before. It's juvenile mono, monomycetic, um, is that right? Leukemia. No, I'd never heard of that either. Myelomonocytic leukemia. Okay. How is that a very rare disease that that small children get? Yes. Um, I think. I'm sorry. Well, I was just reading this here that you printed off the website. It says it's very rare. It actually accounts for less than 1% of all childhood leukemia. Uh, So it is very rare. And as, you know, Angel's been telling everything uh, about Veda's story, the thing, you know, through me talking to Felicia, uh, about what's going on with Veda, the thing is they don't have anything to compare her to, Mm-mm. you know. And with a, with a lot of other cases, you can, you can say, okay, we've seen this before and we've seen this and this is what other, but they don't really have that. Um, so it's um, I don't want to say necessarily a shot in the dark, but they have to try something and and, and see how she responds to that because there's no, there's there's no one else. I think they even talked to doctors in Germany. So there's really no cases like that around. Very, very, very few and far between. Yeah. So, uh. so every drug they try is basically an experimental drug that exactly. they're trying on her then, right? Wow. Yeah, yes. she's a wow. clinical study. Wow. Um, she is the tiniest with this 
um, disease. Now, this picture, guys, that, that uh, those that will watch on uh, Vine Television and on channel uh, TV, uh, cable TV channel 15, this picture of Veda there, tell us a little bit about that one, Angel. She, on June 16th, reached her two-month mark, so they celebrated. It's a little mini birthday for her. Um, yeah, she, she looks and she she's moving around she looks well she's doing well considering everything that she's been put through she is a remarkable little individual i mean she is truly a miracle she, so she is and she just looks just like a little preemie she looks extremely healthy she does she, and even to beautiful. see her you know in in person she she looks perfect oh yeah yeah and you look at her hand she's feeling her face because she oh, knows yes. something is going on <laughs> yeah. with her at this point she's so intuitive she's already smiled at her mom she she'll look around she'll notice things and now let me share with you what she went through she went through a um, surgery um it was it last tuesday to yeah. uh, it's called a splenectomy they had to remove her spleen oh. because it was trapping her platelets and her red blood cells and it was enlarged and they they had told her the doctors had told her there was a blockage in her intestines that there was a malrotation the intestines were twisted and they were going to have to go in and untwist the intestines and pin them back meaning they would also have to remove her appendix because the appendix was going to be in the way or move them to the other side so when the doctors got in there course you know Tuesday it happened you know, it took about three hours for them to do this surgery when the doctors got in there and they were working on her intestine there was no malrotation the doctor saw that there was a blockage and that part of that bowel was dead and it was perfectly viable there was no malrotation there was nothing wrong with her intestines which was a huge huge deal because mm. If there was, they would have possibly had to separate her stomach from the, the bowel uh. to allow it to heal, and then she wouldn't be able to eat. Mm. With uh. this being said, they didn't have to do that. They did have to remove the spleen, but they considered it a clean surgery. Good. So it didn't pose a huge risk of infection, and she lost minimal blood. Mm. Great. So that was a miracle. Yes, she came it was. through it with flying collars. Yeah. And when she came through, she came through quickly. She woke up, she recovered quickly, and she was looking around, and she was like a new lease on life. She was just checking things out, and she was like, hey, mom, you know, here I am. Mm. Another hurdle she's mm -hmm. overcome. And she's just, I mean, there's no other words for it you know she just she is a survivor sure she's sure. a thriver she's and a, so she's a little fighter yes she is she's feisty she is um yeah. my my daughter has a, a a quote on her wall that says and though she be but little she is fierce oh and we believe wow. that yeah. wow um but she uh course you know with the spleen being removed we were hoping that her white blood cell count would continue to come down because it was rising and it was killing off like her bone marrow mm. and her red blood cells and was squeezing all that out and that did not happen her red her white blood cell count is continuing to soar and so they had to um she's already had one round of chemotherapy it was a low dose long-term chemo and that didn't work so they put her on a experimental chemo i believe or a little um more potent chemo called eric and so she's on that currently now until saturday you know you know you, when mm. you think of chemo and what adults go through or, or young teenagers if they have if they have cancer there's just so much they can get of that because chemo is so powerful i can't yes. imagine how, how it affects a small child because you really got to use small doses of chemo at that point and in that side person's effects life. is there side effects with any um, of this with her hair loss and you know upset stomach and uh, possible like ulcerations or like mouth sores from it so wow. they don't want to leave her on it for too long because she's she's tiny yeah so they can take her off and then put her back on as needed yes. at that point in time wow and I noticed something yesterday on Facebook you had posted that she's starting to grow. She gained another yes. ounce or is another pound or another pound? Another oh, pound? that's yes. great. Yeah, she's four, four, four now. Yep. Four she's pounds, over that four, four pound ounces. mark. Four, four. Yeah. Wow. How awesome is that? Yeah. That's great. And how, how each day is something different that she has to go through, different tests and everything. What's yes. she like today? What? 
What is she going through today, this morning? What are they monitoring her for now? Well, they're monitoring her white blood cell count to bring that down. And she doesn't have to get stuck every time she does have a pick line in. And That's then she good. has a port in that administers the medication and nutrients and mm -hmm. whatever she needs. So that keeps her from being agitated. Good. Yeah, That's good. And, yeah, that is awesome. And we'll put up another picture here in just a moment, uh, Brenton Angel of uh, VEDA. And uh, we have a couple more pictures we'll show here in just a few moments. But, you know, this is, you know, and you guys have to make numerous trips over there as, as far as mom and, mom and yes. dad do, too. And it's a strain on the whole entire family because they have responsibilities at home. But their employers have been very good yes. to them. And that's yes. a blessing there, right? Yes. Yeah. Their employers have been phenomenal. Um, and the community has been outstanding. Mm -hmm. Our um our church, New Beginnings Church, have been wonderful. Mm -hmm. They've been there for us. They've prayed with us. They've cried with us. Um, you know, when we go up and we do worship, that's that's one thing we're praising God for is Veda and for her life and for mm -hmm. her being able to be here, thanking him for blessing us with her. Right. And, and it doesn't matter what obstacles she has to overcome. We know that he's going to be there through it all. And sure. it's we have that hope that sure. so many people if they don't have god they don't have that Thank you know that's right with yeah. god this is this is all possible and we can see her surviving this and she will have to have a possibly have to have a bone marrow transplant to help cure her of this disease and i know he can bring her through this and she can be cured and i could see her growing and, yeah, and just yeah. being as wild as our other grandchild. Oh, and the day that happens is going to be glorious yeah right. yeah amen and, and, and is she currently on a transplant list do they put children on at that point in time yes. immediately when they know for sure yeah i think i think they want she has to be at least 12 pounds yes. uh, like 12 to 15 pounds and in good you know and strong enough good enough health uh, I think that's what Felicia told us yesterday, because uh, we weren't really sure on the size. Sure. Um, so she does have a little bit to go, um, you know. But but God's just been amazing from day one, and uh, when you look, you know, it makes you really, uh, you know. I've had three children who are very healthy, and you see a baby this tiny, and with this amount of problems, and you think it's just amazing. I mean, life in and of itself is a miracle, but then when you see stories like Veda, you know, it's it, it really shows you how amazing God is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um and you I and mean, there's no there's no explanation for things and I think doctors would even testify to that that you know, things that we were absolutely positive on just changed. Yeah. And I'm still believing, I'm still speaking against JMML. I'm still yeah. believing that God yeah. can completely deliver and heal her of that. Amen. I also know that he uses doctors and medicine to heal. Yeah. I believe in healing. Um, and it can happen today or tomorrow or whenever. I, sure. But I know that, that, that God has a plan for Veda. I don't know what it is, but I know it's something good because he's called all of us for a purpose. Right. This picture here that's on our screen, guys, uh, Angel, tell us a little bit about that picture with Veda there. Well, my daughter was taking pictures of her, and she just looked up at her, and she smiled. She smiled. You could see it with her eyes. She mm -hmm. smiled, and she's only two two uh, two months old, and she's smiling at her mom. You know, through everything that she's going through, she smiles. She just looks like a a happy, healthy little yes. girl there. Yeah. Just very humble and content, <laughs> yes. with no problem whatsoever. Yeah, she she's is absolutely beautiful, guys. Yeah, she's she's absolutely gorgeous. And um, I got a question. Sure. Um, so when she does this bone marrow transplant, yes. the bone marrow does it have to come from another? baby no no it, it just has just to be someone that matches it'll have to be someone that matches it can be an adult yeah from my understanding it can be as long as a healthy adult that ha you know that the bone marrow uh, just matches, matches mm -hmm. beta okay because it through i kind of reading through this th thing that angel brought basically what they do is they 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 use the chemotherapy and, and sometimes right of course they, i don't think they'd use radiation with beta but they use the chemotherapy to to kill what's in the current bone marrow and then they transplant fresh bone marrow to hopefully eliminate the the cancer that that's in the body from what okay. i understand yeah. okay. okay wow so it's i mean it's just it's it's a parallel to what jesus did for us because you know people yeah. have got blood transfusions what she's get she's getting fresh blood she's right. getting new life and that's what bone marrow is going to do is going to give her new life, new life just like christ gave us new life yeah. so it's really neat parallel to think that 
we we need God. We need Jesus so much, and He 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 died for us. He shed His blood for us. He gave that to us, and someone else is going to give that gift to Veda. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. So. We're going to come back, guys, as we're heading into 9 o'clock here. We're going to come back, talk a little more, talk a little bit about the Facebook page you got going for, and if someone wants to help, how they can help out toward Veda. And, and of course, the big thing is, guys, pray, continually pray. Yes, absolutely. Oh, yes. We know that works. Amen, amen. We're going to come back, guys, here as uh, we're heading into 9 o'clock. More to come here on the Vine Morning Show. And we welcome you back to the Vine Morning Show here on this Friday morning. I'm Mark, and along with Kelly. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, Mark. As uh, we're back on Vine Radio and television as well, and also TV channel 15, our cable TV channel. And uh, we thank those that are watching today, as well as we're with Brent and Angel McGuire from Fairfield as we're talking about Baby Veda this morning, guys. And and, uh, you've been sharing us with some uplifting stories this morning. But, Angel, there's something that uh, the doctor spoke to your daughter about concerning Veda and you called it profound it was just encouraging whenever she came through and she was in her room recovering from surgery uh, the surgeon came in two other doctors the attending physician and two nurses came in and so we were kind of waiting for some really bad news and uh, my daughter was sitting down and I I had the opportunity to be in there with her and and they uh, they told her when we got in, um, the, the surgery went through very well. And they said when we got in there, her intestines and everything were perfectly fine. We were not expecting to see that. We saw through the testing that there was a portion that was dead, and it was not so. It was all pink. Everything was working just fine. We do not have to do anything with that. And that is huge because she's going to be able to eat, and she's going to be able to grow quickly and then you know of course they said about her spleen that it you know they had to remove the spleen but it was a clean surgery well with that the surgeon looked right at my daughter and she said whatever you're doing your prayers are working and my daughter looked at her and she said yes they are and that was so profound and my daughter needed to hear that from a surgeon Mm -hmm. to tell her that your prayers they're working for your little girl Wow, wow. And, you know, those are encouraging words. And, you know, the thing is, that's what we got to do as the more that gather in in his name and pray, healing continues. Mm -hmm. It begins, but it continues more and more. Mm -hmm. And and we just have to remember each day to keep her in our daily prayers. And and I know with everything going on in your guy's life and and in, 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 in mom and dad's life, there's so much. And But you guys have a loving church family, Brent, Mm -hmm. and you guys... You're, you're, it's so, it's overwhelming. I'm sure the support you're getting. Yeah, um, you know, New Beginnings is our is our uh, second family, um, and that's been very evident uh, through this. Um, how everyone's been there for us, and and we and and we like you said, prayer is so powerful and it's so important. We just appreciate everyone that has has done that, continues to do that, um, because as we've already you know talked about, we've we've seen the power of prayer. We've seen things happen and, and um but yeah our uh, church family is great um you know um, so many people that have been there for us and helped us you know we had a a pork burger cell to you know benefit and we had people that helped us with that and and uh, prayer blankets and you know just other little th- you know have people come up to me and say hey it's not much but here's something i know that you guys are traveling they're traveling here's some here's a little bit and every little bit you know um um matters and you know to me uh, prayer is more important than any amount of money you can give us Mm -hmm. um even though i appreciate that but and and felicia didn't appreciate that but prayer um is the greatest thing that anyone could do and and that's you know i think that anyone that's listening today may not know us may not know veda um but we we appreciate those prayers because because god hears them and uh he answers them yeah amen amen and uh, Felicia is over there with Veda this yes. morning, and, and each morning it's, it, it has to be a blessing for her that she gets to wake up right next to her because she's real close to right there by her, and she can reach out and touch her, and, and Veda knows that's her mom, and, and there's just so much going on in that small child's life. I just can't imagine I can't either. being a parent and going through that. And, um, but, you know, they have a Facebook page. Veda has a Facebook page. Tell us a little bit about that, Felicia. 
Felicia started a Facebook yeah. page for her um, <coughs> probably about a week after she was born. It's called Grow Veda Grow. And she's been telling her story on that Facebook page since the time she was born and sharing in great detail what her baby is going through, what they are going through, her feelings. Um, of course, you know, my, my daughter's feelings and, and her um, the father's feelings and how they're handling this and how the doc what the doctors are saying and everything is being shared in hopes that it would help someone else mm -hmm. and so um, she's also started a GoFundMe account to help with their situation for medical expense and so that's on there as well um, and also um, your daughter speaking there's someone else you have a, a three-year-old granddaughter yes. So does she get to go over and be around the baby? I, I didn't know yes. if they would let her be in or not. The St. Louis Children's Hospital is wonderful. They've allowed siblings. To I was going to ask so about great. visitors, if people can come over yes. and visit. That's allowed great that she gets to, to be a part so of it. She's only three years old, and she gets to go up there. And my daughter has on the Grove Ada Grow site um, a video of Aslan singing to her little sister oh. and just being in there. Now she can't touch her. Felicia's the only one and Chris are the only ones that can really touch her but and hold her. But that's okay. At least she gets yes, to be in there. That's a there. big thing. And Veda can hear her. She responds oh, to her. Wow. She looks awesome. at her. Awesome. And, you know, she needs that. She needs her family. She right. does. So. Now tell us this picture here, Angel. Tell us a little bit about that. When this picture uh, was first taken and what was going on at that point in time? Well, at that point in time, she was, let's see here what date that was. It was on the 14th of May, so she was almost a month old there. Yeah, she's still very, very tiny. Mm -hmm. But she, uh, I guess on that day, she had, for the very first time, Felicia had noticed that she was sucking on her thumb. Okay. And so <laughs> I guess she didn't quite get the picture of her doing that, but she's, uh, she was a little fighter, and she was just, she was a little scrawny, but she was great. She was perfect in every way. And so, yeah, she hasn't grown very much longer than what she started out at 14 uh, inches. She's wow. still short, but she's <laughs> plumping up. So, mm -hmm. Wow, wow. Just look at the diaper on her. and, yes. and the and, and she that just, diaper's tiny when yeah. you have it off of her. And she's just laying there. But, but look how, how peaceful she looks, yes. guys, just laying mm -hmm. there, you know. And uh, that's a, that's another another uh, great great picture over there, guys. And and if 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 people want to to help out, what who can they contact? Uh, they can contact uh, us. They can call us, or they can contact Felicia through the Grow Veda Grow page. Um, and if they're wanting to help to be a don donor yeah, that for was bone ask marrow, you about bone marrow. Yeah. they'll need to go to, I believe it's called, it's either the best match or, let me find it real quick. I've got it right here. You're talking about visitors a while ago, and I was just going to say if, if there is anyone out there listening, uh, I know that they would probably appreciate um, people visiting. I know it's a little bit of a trip, um, but I think visiting out, as long as you're 15 years or older, from like 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., our visiting hours, you have to go through process to sure. get a badge and, and, and everything. Um, but, like, grandparents can come anytime and visit. Um, I think siblings are also limited to that same time frame. Yes. Um, but other guests can go through as long as they're 15 years or older. And I know that, you know, um, Felicia and Chris know that they know that people are supporting them. Sure. But it, it would also be probably nice for some people um, that didn't know them that maybe weren't sure, you know, um, it's – um, you know, they're in the NICU there on the fifth floor, um, and all I have to do is tell, uh, at the front desk, tell them, you know, Veda Scott, and, and they're there to visit and go through the process. So you, you know, and another big thing, too, that people can help, if, if there's something at home that needs to be done at their home, that's always a good thing you can start at, too. If they, if they live somewhere that their grass needs mowed or something like that, uh, a neighbor, I'm sure they, they're getting that kind of a help, too, right? Yeah, yeah I mean... Um, you know, they've been back and forth at the house sure, and doing sure. whatever. And, of course, Chris is working and yeah. and uh, everything. But, yeah, I mean, it, there are different things that have to be done. So yeah, just take, It's just a little bit of 
something someone can do to take that level of stress off oh, yeah. and eliminate that because of so much going on with their and with her over there. Absolutely. I think some may may think, well, it's not that big a deal. It is a big deal. Yes, Everything is. everything's a big deal. Yes, and and every every little bit of help is appreciated. So did you find that? I did. Uh, it's called be the and it is um, global leader in bone marrow transplant in transplantation. So uh, that would be the best thing to do is to just go in there and, and research that um, site. And I've already um, sent in my kit so that I can be on the registry. Mm. And I don't know if I'm going to be a match for my granddaughter or not, but I will be a match for somebody. Oh, yeah. Sure. And to be there, to be able to help out and to save someone's life, it's worth it. Mm-hmm. Now, how much, and we said this off the air, but how, how long is she expected to be in the hospital, guys, to stay? I know it's a long time, but, yeah. You know. uh, she's, I mean, I would say, I mean, she's got a, at least several more months. Sure. Uh, depending on, you know, what happens on her growth and how she responds to current um, treatments and medication and everything, you know. I mean, like I said earlier, you know, God right now could could heal her of that, yeah, and she sure, start yeah, normal growth and be out in two months. You know, That's true. Uh, what's what's amazing is we're still two or three week, weeks from when she was actually supposed to be born. Yeah. Is and that you, right? You know, and here we are talking about yeah. about her, um, and it's just amazing. Um, I know I said this earlier, and I, I'm not trying to beat a dead horse, but you know, Jacob, our youngest, was the smallest child that I had, and he was five pounds something. And I thought he was small. But then you look yeah. at Veda at one pound nine ounces, you think, my gosh, that's amazing yes. that someone that small can survive and thrive. Mm-hmm. And, and despite what's happened, um, you know, you just, you just see God's footprint, his fingerprints, I mean, you know, in everything. Um, that her, you see, yeah, and her heart, her little heart continues to beat yeah. and just beat away and mm-hmm. keeps her breathing and smiling, right? And, and, and you know, and like Angel said, she wasn't on, she didn't have to, uh, she had assistance for six hours on breathing, and then she was that's off. Amazing. So it's just you think, that's wow, that's amazing that that, you know, yeah. um, that all that happened. So, and she's got to just basically eat and sleep. And grow right now yeah. because right. she's going to be 12 pounds before they can yes. do the bone yeah. marrow. Right. Okay. Wow. Awesome. And you know what that, I, I don't know, I haven't really broke down the rate of what she's gained per week. But, you know, like I said, God right now can say, hey, this, all this other stuff's gone. We're going to let her grow and, and here we go. Or, you know, I don't, I don't know how long it's going to take, but I, I know that it, she'll get there. Mm-hmm. Well, she the, will. Yeah, she will, and the and the main thing is the 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 continued support, the prayer, the continued prayers lifted over you guys, over Chris and Felicia, mm-hmm. and over Baby Veda. It's so important to keep her in prayer each and every day in our daily walk. Yeah, Very and important. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say. I think you know what's hard here is that you know you as a grandparent, you know, you want and and I know I'm probably speaking for Angel here. Is that you know you want to take away that pain that they're going through, um, both Veda um, and Chris and Felicia, um, but we can't. You know the only thing we can do is is be there for them, see them through it, support mm-hmm. them, continue to pray. Um, but another thing that's important, and I think it's important for everyone, whether it's family or friends, is that you know we can't begin to understand what they're going through, so we just need to be there for them and not make it about us. Um, cause sometimes uh, we want to be selfish and we want things to be a certain way, but what I have to realize is that it's not about us. It never was about us. Sure. Um, the situation is not about us. Um, it's about God ultimately mm-hmm. and what he's going to do and the glory that's going to come from that. Um, what I want people to see from all of this is that God can use you. He's using my she was one pound nine ounces Mm -hmm. using my granddaughter to touch somebody's life right now yeah yeah exactly look at look at the life she's touching right now with the doctors the nurses that are taking care of her these are memories that's not going to go away because they're seeing they're seeing a miracle keeping keep that keeps developing each and every day guys an unexplainable miracle yeah exactly they're very scientific and what they're seeing, they can't put words to. Amen. Mm. Amen. That is true. Brent and Angel, thanks for coming in this morning. Hey, thanks and, for having and, us. And, and sharing the story of Veda. And uh, remind everybody that go to Facebook, 
grow Veda, grow, and they can follow the story of Veda and follow along. And, and if anyone wants to contact you to help, they can get a hold of you guys, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. What right. about numbers? Do you need to give out any numbers? I can give you my number, and then uh, I'm always in contact with Felicia daily. Uh, my number is 599-3089. 599-3089 yes. for Angel, and she can okay. answer any question that you may have and help you or give you any information that you need to help out. Guys, again, thanks a lot for coming in this morning. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, yes, Kelly. It's great been a seeing you guys. been a pleasure, guys. Thanks for having us. Brent and Angel McGuire talking about Baby Veda this morning here on the Vine Morning Show. And again, want to remind everybody, this will be archived on our website at wvyn.org where you can go back and listen to the interview. And it will also be uploaded on our YouTube channel as well. And also it will air on TV Channel 15 at a later date. Right now it's time for Uncommon Moments with Tony Dungy and his wife Lauren Dungy this morning. It's being underwritten by Fairfield National Bank. So, why FNB? This is Carrie Book with Fairfield National Bank. And it's simple, really. With locations in 